Great. Well, my name is Kristen Johnson, and I'm one of the principal investigators here at Caliber. And it's my pleasure to talk to you today about KA34, which is our regenerative medicine for osteoarthritis. So I want you to think for me, with me just for a moment. Do you happen to have chronic pain as you climb the stairs or grab that cup of coffee? It's possible that if you are an athlete or over the age of 50 that you may actually have or be getting to develop osteoarthritis. So osteoarthritis is actually a disease of the entire synovial joint. That means the bone, the cartilage, the tendons, and the meniscus. And so unfortunately for all of the patients that suffer from osteoarthritis, this chronic pain that gets worse with aging, there is no therapy today where we can actually change the course of this disease. And what I mean by that is can we actually block or reverse the degeneration that takes place within the joint? But what I'm going to tell you today is that K34 is not only an example of how Scripps Caliber has taken and translated a basic scientific discovery into a medicine that is now in phase one clinical trials, but that it also has the chance to change this landscape and be one of the first regenerative therapies for OA. So let me tell you the story about K34. When we started this project, it actually had to reside within the articular cartilage. Now that's the covering that is on the long bones of every joint, and we started thinking about the types of cells. And as you can see in this cartoon here, you can see that there's many different cells, but most of them are actually the chondrocyte. And under normal conditions, these cells maintain a healthy environment. Embedded within that are mesenchymal progenitors, or stem cells. These stem cells actually, even though as the tissue declines, as you can see here, the numbers of stem cells increase. So with that knowledge, we actually hypothesize that what if we could identify a small molecule that could be directed and injected locally into the knee joint to take the mesenchymal stem cells that reside within the cartilage and differentiate those into healthy articular chondrocytes. So to do that, we decided to use a phenotypic screening approach. Now, the reasons behind this actually have to do with the fact that at this time, we didn't know exactly what would be the best target, meaning what is the best way to help or improve the patients because many of the clinical trials, if not all of them, for osteoarthritis regenerative therapies had failed at that time. So using a phenotypic approach, what we did is we took mesenchymal stem cells, put them in multi-arrayed wells, and added a small molecule from our, la our library of thousands of molecules, one compound to each well. What we did is we screened for those using an image-based assay and looked for the cartilage nodule formation. This is relatively straightforward imaging assay, but this is relevant to the disease because one of the first steps that takes place in mesenchymal differentiation into a chondrocyte is this cluster formation. So we did this screen. We found a number of different hits, one of them which we named cartagenin, as you can see here. This molecule could not only induce chondrocyte differentiation, it could also protect the cartilage. That's critical because as we're repairing the cartilage, we wanted to make sure that the matrix was not lost and that the mediator, such as, as nitric oxide, could actually be hold, held in place or restored as we're improving the cartilage properties. So we were ex quite excited about this molecule and investigated it a few steps further. We looked more specifically at the differentiation that cartagenin drives. We learned that it actually increases specific and healthy chondrocyte markers, as well as it could inhibit the bone differentiation. This, of course, is critical. Where you have a synovial uh, chondrocyte layer, we do not want bone, because of that, of course, would also lead to pain. So this molecule encouraged us to go ahead and step on further, and this is where we brought in the medicinal chemistry team at Caliber. What they did is they helped us by making over 400 analogs of cartagenin, and this led us to be able to identify K34, which has an improved potency, improved efficacy, as well as it improved the molecule itself so that it could withstand the, the rigors of clinical development. So throughout this whole process, we were able to look at many different molecules, and K34, just like cartagenin, could induce specific markers of uh, chondrocytes, such as COMP and type 2 collagen. 
In addition, as you're seeing over here on the right side, we found that the molecule actually only needed to reside within the, on top of the stem cell for only a few hours, or even less than that, 30 minutes. This is critical. Remember, our concept for K34 was to be injected locally into the synovial joint, and it in itself, the fluid, turns over every couple hours. So this helped us to make sure that a molecule which we're identifying and injected may have the opportunity to benefit patients. In parallel to that, we began investigating many different animal models uh, that are similar and recapitulate parts of the OA phenotype. And one of the models which you're looking at here was actually a rat meniscal tear model where we injured the rat's knee so that when it walked, it created a car damage in the articular cartilage similar to patients. What we're showing here is you can see that we found with biweekly treatment of cartagenin or K34, we could actually improve or decrease the amount of cartilage damage. This, in comparison and along with other data in mouse and other rodent and even canine models, encouraged us to continue to advance this molecule forward. At the same time, and this is an important uh, point that we do here at Scripps Research, we investigated the mechanism of how K34 works. If you think back a few slides, we identified this through a phenotypic screen. But what we needed to know was how exactly is this molecule important for inducing OA or improving OA. We found that the molecule actually binds to filament A. Both cartagenin and K34 share the same mechanism of action. This allows a transcription factor called CBF beta to be translocated into the nucleus and partner with RUNX1, which gives the specificity of the mesenchymal progenitors in the cartilage to drive the appropriate differentiation. So this encouraged us, along with all of the preclinical data, to begin the development process. We actually then partnered with the translational arm of Caliber to manufacture the molecule, um, prepare the drug substance and drug product, as well as investigate uh, the preclinical toxicology. Everything came back with clear signs that we put, should proceed into filing the investigational new drug application, which we have done. And the exciting thing is, is now partnered with, with the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, or CIRM, we are able to move forward into the phase one clinical study of 4K34. As Pete mentioned, we've already dosed 25 patients, and we actually expect to be finishing all of the clinical portion, the patient portion of this study, by the end of 2019. Uh, we're excited, but so far, in the single ascending dose arm, we have had no direct uh, K34 related adverse events um, that are remarkable. And so we have just now recently initiated uh, the SMAD or the multiple ascending dose portion of the study. The main objective of the study is to assess the safety and the tolerability of K34, but there's many activities going on behind the scenes, as Pete has alluded to, in terms of exploring the different biomarkers that we need to really understand and, and choose patients and doses that would be affected um, by KA34. So what I've told you today is that K34 is actually an example of how a basic discovery in cartilage biology and understanding a new mechanism of action has actually been translated at Scripps Research into a clinical asset that is now in being investigated in phase one. What's even more exciting are, is the work that's ongoing as we prepare for the phase two study. We're developing an extended release formulation so that we can begin targeting additional patients with fewer injections, as well as we are looking and have um, initial identification of biomarkers and ph pharmacodynamic markers so that we can better improve our clinical plans. Caliber and Scripps together have come to be able to not only translate this research, but also what's exciting is the potential for K34 as a new mechanism and potentially one of the first disease-modifying mechanisms for osteoarthritis. And this is one of the examples which you'll hear in this session of many of the regenerative opportunities and uh, research projects that are ongoing at Scripps Caliber. Thank you.